All right, this is Calibos, and we're playing um, Project of Zone 3. So I didn't exactly get all of the stuff done that I wanted to, but we got some of it done. Uh, meanwhile, I am having a lot of loot bags, and so I'd like to go ahead and set something up to deal with the loot bags. So I don't remember if this requires power. I don't think that it does, but we can just do that. Um, another thing that I need to arrange is sorting of some of this stuff so that it doesn't uh, I mean if we have locations for it over there there's no reason for us to be dealing with it here so Optimally, I would like to begin getting rid of quite a lot of it, actually. I memorized a drawing of eight of us or something, eight of ice. So you'll notice that standing next, uh, right next to me, there is nether bricks and lava. So if you're not familiar with what that setup is, I will explain it and as well as we go into some of the things that I've done. So I am printing this up because I, I hate having to jump. And I have made this. So this is a demonically gargantuan drum. Uh, it's not super challenging to make and it is acting as basically a, a catchment for our lava, which we are now producing off of two blaze meshes. So, in order to make this dem demonically gargantuan drum, uh, we required six demon metal ingots and two Klein bottles and a reinforced large drum. So these are actually really easy to make. Um, I went ahead and I took some gold and <coughs> I just chucked gold in here and demon metal ingots popped out. Uh, Klein bottles are likewise pretty easy to make. Two ender pearls are f um, and then some glass bottles. I had some glass bottles in here from loot and we had plenty of ender pearls. So that's that. And then uh, the reinforced drum is pretty much two gold, two pressure plates and that's just like, you know, two gold ingots to make a pressure plate, so it's pretty cool stuff. Very simple. Um, these are diamonds, of course, you know about diamonds. Iron drum is basically six iron. These are pressure plates made out of iron, and this is a cauldron. Cauldron is vanilla recipe. So, yeah, very simple. And underneath, I'll show you how this works. So, we are not using a lot of power, and these are going to be upgraded. Right now, they're producing roughly 4 F a, RF a tick, because we're not really doing anything with it. But you can see that it's it's got lava there, and it's putting the lava into all of these. And these are producing power. These are the hardened flux ducts. <coughs> so, a hardened flux ducts pretty simple to make. Uh, if we take a regular leadstone flux duct, which is just redstone, lead, and glass, gives us six, and then we can upgrade that with additional redstone and an invar ingots, you know, at, at three for three. I mean, we're just, we're basically improving them, so I don't, I don't feel that it's super necessary to get more. And the difference is this whole moves a thousand RF a tick, and these move four thousand RF a tick, so it's okay. But I'm just gonna be running these around uh, as we go. I still haven't managed to set up anything as far as automating that, but. Uh, 
Do we, have, do we, have, we have nether quartz, right? I'm sure we have nether quartz. <coughs> yeah, I'm still trying to get over that nasty thing that I had. Just will not go away. So, my next step is going to be making a drawer controller and then having stuff go from the, this into drawer controllers so it automatically sorts. Well, that was fun. All right. So, there we go. I'm just trying to, like, get some of this going. I've made extras of this, and I, I have some of the stuff to make more if I need to. So, this is a retriever. Um, whereas these push stuff out of the container they're on, this pulls stuff down to a container that it's on. So it's pretty cool. Oh, we were we were gonna make an aqueous accumulator. <coughs> uh, what do we need for the aqueous accumulator? Aqueous accumulator. Uh, so we need gears, a servo. Gears, a device frame, uh, so what do we need for the servo? Servo should just be iron, we can do that, oh we already have the servo. So we just need glass, and we just pulled some of the glass out of here. Glass, and that will give us the aqueous accumulator. So, I think at this point we need another bucket. So we're just gonna, one, two, three. Chuck those in there, chuck that in there. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how I want to set this up. There's no reason to set it up on the top. It'll be fairly low tech as far as that goes. Now, aqueous accumulator will pull water into it. It's very, it's very cool like that. And the amount of water that it intakes is depending on how much of it is surrounding. <clears throat> so, um, I like to put it in the middle of a three by three pool for, for best effect. And I rarely have to upgrade them. They are just that cool. Um, so, for example, if we put it here, we do this. Go get another bucket of water. All right, and so now it's full. 
the cool thing about this is it does not require any particular sort of of pump to put stuff into the ducting. It'll just do it. The not so cool thing is it will just put stuff into the ducting. Um, and you're like, how is that good and not good? So let's take the hardened fluid duct. Let's see how much this we're going to need. All right. So we need the crescent wrench because our crescent hammer because we do not want any of this stuff to to join cuz it's a super hassle. Um, now I seem to recall Yeah, this is one of my biggest problems with thermal dynamics. I love the ducting, but I really like the Ender IO conduit for the fact that it will um It will occupy the same space at the same time. There we go. And like I said, this pumps water on its own, so it won't care too much about stuff. Um, so... All we have to do now is pump latex into this. Let's do this. We need a servo. That's why I had all those extra servos and whatnot. Servo, we can just take a regular one. Let's check this out. that tell it to ignore and now so it's been going for a little bit like not excessively long but it'll it'll grind through pretty quick and you'll have to remember it taking nine of these in order to uh, to make a, a single sheet so we need pretty much 36 for any one machine but now that this is set up, it should just be going automatically. Now I am going to try and get some more blaze, uh, blaze mesh and set up more uh, <coughs> crucibles. Because as we use more power, it's going to burn more lava. So let's look into food because I'm starving. So one of the things that I have noticed is it's not really worth making food because all of the food has pretty much garbage. Like somebody has gone through and just hardcore tanked all of the food values. So there's not, yeah, apples are supposed to be like two or three. There's, there's not really a purpose into to bothering with them. At least the apple juice is decent. Um, the apple juice is apparently better than cooked steak. So I, I don't get that, but sure. So... Um... But yeah, like the, the pizzas and the s'more smingets here. I don't know what this is. Let's see what this does.
Do we now have a magnet? Do we have magnet mode now? I don't know. That would be fancy. So yeah, I'm not super. Ah, uh, we do have magnet mode. Let's go. Uh, let's go do this thing. Super concerned about this. Let's take. Let's take those and do that. Uh, this is a fluid duct. Do we have some item ducts in here somewhere? Item duct. So we want to do that. We want to do that. We want to take the crescent hammer. Tell it to ignore those. So here's the thing that we can do. Okay, so oh, these are fluid ducts again. That's annoying. I don't act. Okay. So do this. Do this. And then if we take our retriever. And we tell it to look for. For example, we whitelist loot bags. And now, it will go looking for loot bags here. Theoretically, it looks for loot bags. When we, uh... There we go. So all of the loot bags will go in here. And then we go ahead and we put a servo on the other end. Servo. Let's give it a hardened one because it's slightly faster. So now it should pump stuff out. And empty loot bags. All right, so let's pull this apart and we'll make another mesh. At some point, I'm going to go through and... Okay. So if there's nothing there, then we we haven't seen it yet. So we can chunk those in here. Alright, well, good enough. that in there. Let's get another uh... 
All right, all right. Item duct. So, optionally, what I should be doing is having a a retriever here, so that we can. Uh, reduce the number of retrievers and and uh, servos that we're using. things. Do not know. definitely need to light up that thing over there for the next blood moon. No idea when that is, but it's probably tonight or tomorrow night. These things are so frequent. So there's no specific height that I set my stuff. I mean, I try for a couple of averages, like usually five or six based on how high I can place things. Um, more than anything else, really. I feel if it's uh, large enough, or high enough for me to place things, but low enough that uh, I can reach, then that should be fine, right? Now we don't have to jump going up and down. So, left side, whatever. Probably gonna fall off at some point anyway. So, um, oh, another thing. I let me explain how this is working. This setup here. So I've got a hopping bonsai thing up there. And because there's only a single inventory space here, but it holds a lot and it only holds the, uh, the logs. It's pretty much just going to keep that filled with logs. And then it pumps the logs into this block placer, which places them below here, you know, into that section. And then I have the four tree fluid extractors um, yeah, let's see, I have the four tree fluid extractors there, uh, working on it. And that's where we're getting all of our sap. Now, that's not a, that's not an acacia, and we may change that later as we get into an acacia thing, but that's, that's later. Um, as it is, like I said, this is an overflow so that, you know, as we use all of this up, we can make more. And I will remind you that these are, let's do, let's do that. Uses go. So that will give us 39. Oops. One, two, three. Just make it an even 40, right? <clears throat> uh, 
chuck that in there. So one of the things that I'd like to do is I'd like to begin um, changing out the floor here. I don't care that it's it's stone. What I care about is I'm absolutely going to vein mine it later. And uh, that's a problem. But on the cool side, as we get a little bit further, um, we're going to be able to to get into getting the pink slime relatively easily because of the way that the, the hostile mobs work. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, but it is time to call this episode. I'm probably going to get right back into it. But yeah, I'd like to go ahead and thank everybody for coming. I really appreciate it. I, I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed, you know, my my rambling and, you know, stuff that we're doing. Uh, if you guys have a direction that you want me to go, please, by all means, uh, you know, let me know. I won't, I won't know otherwise. Um, so, yeah. If you like that, leave a like. If you don't, don't. Questions, comments, concerns can all go below. Have a great night.